Alrighty, Sharp Customs coming back at you. Uh, we've got a, uh, just gonna, he's squirmy. He's squirmy. He's a baby. He's like nine weeks old. Uh, this is our new, I don't know what you want to call him, shop dog, addition to the family. Uh, he's pretty cute. He's pretty smart. Uh, we haven't named him yet. We're not sure on the name. We, uh, we usually wait a few weeks. Uh, he just kind of, you know, we're the type of people, we don't go out and we don't go looking. We don't buy a dog. We wait for one to kind of just show up in our laps. And uh, that's kind of what happened with this little guy. And, uh, you know, we'll watch him for the next week or two. And we'll see what his uh, personality is like. He's very smart. He is so smart. He is like learn stairs going up going down you know he can play fetch he'll bring he'll bring the whatever the stick back to you uh, he's 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 in a playful mood right now I can tell he probably just had a nap uh, he's pretty good goes outside does his thing you know but uh, he's the new addition but I'm gonna put him down oh you want to know what he is he's a Burmese Mountain dog cross with some type of retriever. What retriever? We're not really sure. Uh, we don't really care. I think he's going to be a good dog. He is a he. He's a he. Yes, he's a he. Yes. I'm going to put him down. And uh, hopefully he doesn't chew on my airbrush cord. But uh, today's video, we're going to do a quick simple little airbrush so uh, my parents yes of all people my parents love my mom my dad uh, they're going to the prices right next week so they wanted me to airbrush them up some t-shirts you know to go on the prices right Canada now nah, it's not as good as you know the US uh, one with you know Drew Carey but you know the one here in Canada is kind of a traveling uh, price is right. It, it kind of moves around, but they're excited to go and they wanted some personalized T-shirts when they go next week. So they came to me and they gave me basically a piece of paper and they gave me a Plinko uh, scratch ticket. They like the Plinko game. So I decided, uh, you know, okay, that's what you gave me, Plinko card. Gave me some words on a piece of paper, you know, come on down, the price is right, blah, blah, blah. So, by the way, we are rolling. We are rolling. And I'm going to get right to it because I want to try and keep it short. I know I say that every single time and it turns into, you know, 25, 30 minute video. But this is for all the airbrush people. I'm going to give you some little tips and tricks and hints and, uh, you know, just stuff you need to know doing a t-shirt. Now, I made some stencils. I pre-made stencils. Um, I've already prototyped or done one of the shirts, uh, but I wanted to show you one. I'm not going to show it in full because they are a little bit time consuming. Um, the stencils. I made two stencils. Uh, they're probably more time consuming to make the stencils. Uh, could I have done it all freehand? Well, yeah, I could have done it all freehand. And you know what? There are airbrush artists out there that are phenomenal with you know writing script and just just free handing stuff when it comes to uh, I call it uh, beach t-shirt artwork type of stuff you know they're they're down in Florida and California and you know they have a stand set up and they just blast stuff off but hey don't get me wrong most of them are still using stick on stencils so what do you say we just get at her I've got a t-shirt here laid up. I got this is this little tube here is actually an air vent to suck air out 
right now I can feel it blowing in cool air because here in Ontario seems like we went back into winter here in March but you know it was to be expected so basically I'm gonna do the rundown you know I'm not gonna get too crazy you know when it comes to airbrushing I'm gonna put my glasses on I got all my colors mixed up uh, for the Plinko board for the words uh, just everything's here. I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six, six different colors. Uh, obviously, you can see I use some transfer tape uh, on my cut board. This is this is an important piece of the puzzle. Get yourself one of these if you're going to be doing any type of stenciling, cutting. It's one of those self-healing cutting boards. They're, you know, they're uh, they're not cheap, but uh, you know, forty. 40, 50, 60 bucks for one this size. I'm not sure what size this is, but it's uh, it's the one I use. Um, so basically, my stencils. Normally, I would use this type of paper. It's like a card. It's like a light card paper. Uh, why do I have arrows on it? Well, I got arrows on it because that is my. Just so I know that that is the straight edge, and I will be using these. Uh, You'll see. You'll see. I'll be using those as masks. So basically my stencils, like this one on the t-shirt, it's just paper. It's just a paper. Uh, basically it's a masking paper. Here it is here. It's kind of got a... It's got a bit of a shine on one side. Um, I just went with the paper. I like stenciling on the card paper. It's a little heavier. This is more of a... This is just... Basically I can show you what this is right here I buy a 500 foot roll it's masking paper you know mask up cars when you're painting and stuff uh, you know 500 feet come on 40 bucks this will last me well, I don't know how long it'll last me but it'll last me a while you know I use it for just about everything even making stencils now first time I've used it to actually make a stencil let's do some airbrushing I'm gonna move this little duct because it's blowing in cold air. We got it turned off. Normally I would have that uh, venting outside because of the overspray. Now, I'm doing textiles. Am I using textile paints? No. This was just a quick little job. These shirts are probably only going to get warm for one day and then, who knows, probably, uh, you know, tossed in a drawer, whatever, you know. Um, so I just mixed up some colors of uh, automotive paint it will work it will dry it's not going to bother the people that are wearing them by the time they get them you know next week they'll be good and dry so i got my got my plinko board here uh, what i did is you can see the transfer tape i cut out the letters and i i i stuck them in to my stencil and what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, i'm going to lift this up I've got some tape holding it in place. I'm going to lift it up out of the way. We'll get the Plinko blown in, and then we'll move forward. Uh, these little pieces of tape here and here, as you can see, what I did is I put lines with a pencil, and they're located. So when I pull this back over, uh, I kind of know where the paper's going to sit, just in case anything moves. The fabric, you know, spraying on fabric, look, okay, it, moves, it moves around a lot. So... You know, you got to kind of keep that in mind. We'll just flip this back. We'll just flip her back. Out of the way. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't get in my way. There we go. This is going to be quick. Uh, I've already used these, this transfer tape. I'm going to pull this one. I'm going to pull this. That one's okay. That one's okay. Um, I've already got some red loaded up. Got lots of air in the compressor. So you can blast around the Plinko. And you don't have to be, you know, you don't, th th this is just a quick, supposed to be just a quick t-shirt, uh, you know, for a game show. I'm just going to blast around it. 
I'm gonna take my tip off because it's just the way I uh, just the way I roll. I can get a little tighter. I don't want to bore y'all with the. Uh, there we go. See the P. Look, we'll peel it off. There we go. We got ourselves a P. Let's do the L. Edges are sticking up a wee bit. Like I said, these have already been used once. Could you freehand this? Heck yeah. If you if you think you're good enough, you go right ahead. My uh, my skills. I even have a hard time nowadays just uh, just knifing stuff out with my utility knife or my my little uh, scalpel knife. Uh, could you use automotive paints on a T-shirt? Heck yeah! Why not? Why not? It'll stay. It'll last. Uh, might not last as good as a good textile paint. Uh, but it'll last a while. Especially if you were going to do something custom. If you were going to do like a picture of a hot rod, you know, where you wanted real cool detail. Um, you know, maybe uh, where you're just going to hang it up in your man cave. You know, it's just a picture of your hot rod or your muscle car. Uh, you know, something like that. Yeah, you could you can use automotive paints. That piece of paper was really, uh, or the transfer tape was really, really kind of messing me up there a bit. I could have went and got some uh, acrylics, some textile paints, but... Uh, like I say, this was just a, you know, this quick little job. Figure why bother. Because I would have went and bought the acrylics, you know, uh, some Air Effects maybe by Createx. And it probably just sit around here and not get used, so it was kind of pointless. This paint will stay in this pleat forever. Now in the Plinko, the Plinko, the, uh, the O is actually touching the K, so we'll remedy that. We'll just come around the top. And we'll just join. Same as the bottom. We'll just go straight across. I'm actually surprised, very surprised, that, uh, very surprised all this stuff stayed stuck on. Because it was already used once. There we go. We got our Plinko. Plinko! Look at that. Cool. Cool. Now we're going to pull our, uh, we're going to pull our other, our other stencil back over. Hopefully it lines up. Of course it lines up. That's what it's supposed to do. <clears throat> now I'm going to, I'm going to dump this red. Like I say, I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can. Because I don't want to bore the heck out of you. I know all my commenters, they always say, Oh, you never bore us, man. We love, we love listening to you talk. And it's like, see, look, I'm already down and out. I've lost my, uh, lost my cleaning rag. Where did it go? Here we go. 
so I'm gonna stole it. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna clean this out. That's not the way I roll. I give the bowl just a quick sweep. There you go, get it out. Kind of get rid of any remnants in there. Now we have, Plinko board is kind of white. Uh, it's kind of an off-white, so I mixed up this. This was just basically a, a cream white. I know it looks disgusting, hey? It's kind of a cream white. I added just a little bit of black, a little bit of yellow, uh, just to offset. Just to offset uh, the actual white color. It'll go, it'll go from red to a, I guess you could call it, uh, it's like a beige. It's like a beige. I'm probably going to use a, probably going to use a mask here. Because i got to come across the top. Don't want to get my Plinko, my Plinko letters. And this is just random. This is just random. This does not, this is just to, just kind of give you, kind of, I know it's hard to see with my arm shadowing, but this is just to give the, uh, yeah, the outline of the Plinko board. It doesn't have to be, that's all it's for, it's just to give the outline. Because we're not concerned with the pegs and all that stuff inside the Plinko board. And notice I'm always blowing kind of this way. I'm not going to blow this way because it'll lift. It would lift my uh, my piece of paper here, you know, and then give me problems. Just get my arm out of the way because I don't need it there anymore. There we go. I'll come across the top. Use my mask. Got some red in there. Yeah, my light's kind of not in the right spot tonight. But that's as far as I could move it. I guess it could move my easel back. Uh, you can hold your stencil down every here and there. That's not a big deal. I'm just filling in with this... Uh, just kind of beigey color. I'm gonna leave the center white. I'm not gonna get too carried away. And I am gonna do another uh, type of border. I'm going to do another type of border. I'm going to darken it uh, just to help it kind of stand out a bit. Try to get this in as fast as I can. You can do all kinds of all kinds of cool stuff. A little more beige down here. I'm just blasting it in, you know, circles. I'm gonna come back to the top. Finish off my finish off my border. Just get kind of get it out of the way. And you'll see. You'll see when I uh when I pull the stencil away. You can use your fingers, hold your stencil kind of down in place. Uh, you could glue it. You'll see what I do on the uh, on the next stencil, because or the other kind of the other piece of this one. Now, could I fill this whole thing in? Sure, why not? Of course, I could. Not going to because that would take me, uh, you know, that would take me a long time. Basically, around the edging is kind of what I was targeting. That's what I was targeting. That's it for the, you know, 
the beige. It's just to set the uh, the Plinko board apart. We'll dump the beige. Of course, I made a mess here. Pulling my cap off. Now, I am working on a white t-shirt. Now, I would suggest, you know, this is a dirty old garage. Like, I mean, you just, you just, all you got to do is look at the shirt. You know, it's a white t-shirt. All you have to do is look at it, and it gets dirty. And it's like, so I try to be very careful actually touching the shirt. I mean, you know, you know, it's just one of those things, like, So I'm going to get rid of this beige. We're going to load up black. Should clean out the uh, the pot. Give, just give her a quick, quick go around. There we go. Load her up with black. She'll mix. She'll mix. They all mix. Just give them a little squirt. There we go. There we go. We got the black going. All right. Now I'm going to come in. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly. I'm going to very lightly uh, kind of border, if that's what you want to call it. Just going to go around these little plinko, plinko triangles. This is so subtle. You can make it heavy, doesn't really matter. Obviously I'm going to need a mask for the top. But yeah, this is just very subtle. Just to give me uh, kind of a border. That will do. I'm going to come around my triangles. Uh, basically all I'm doing is I'm just making the triangles stand out more. Really. Doesn't have to be heavy. Just for the effect. There we go. Now. So. Now I got the other piece of the stencil that goes in the middle here, which is obviously it's the writing. I've got it sitting here. Now I just use this here spray adhesive. So if you spray, it's Elmer's. If you spray this on to a stencil and then you stick it onto something right away, it might become permanent. Best results, spray it on, you know, let it sit. The can says, uh, you know, three to five minutes. Uh, I go, I don't know. You know, this has been sitting for probably, well, shit, it's been sitting since I've been talking. So, I'm going to stick it on. Stick her into place. Shouldn't be too bad. We're going to stick it down. Get all our vulnerable, all our vulnerable little points. Oh, there you go. Check that out. Look what it says. Plinko. Come on down. The wife is right. How cool is that? The wife is right. That was not my doing. Believe it or not, that was my mother's crafty doing. I, I, I thought it was brilliant. You know, I thought she came up with something very brilliant. You know, I would have just done, ah, the price is right, you know. But yeah, very brilliant, very uh, very word catchy, like it, very cool, <clears throat> very cool. Now I got this. As you can see, I've got these, you know, in the block letters here. Oh, by the way, the block letters here. This is what I use right here. Look at this. I got these little wooden things, and it's pretty cool. The letters pop out. You know, you can either use this, do your letters, or you can 
just use these. Get these at like a craft store. Probably find them at a dollar store. They're kind of handy. Um, I use them when I just want, you know, simple block lettering. Problem is, is when you're doing, you know, O's, D's, R's, P's, all that stuff, you get these, uh, you get these little centers. So I put a line there in my stencil to hold the center obviously in place. And then you got to come back and you have to, uh, you have to fill those little lines. I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to take my knife. A lot of sticking on there like crazy. I'm going to cut them out. Why not? I already did the other one. Because what I found with the other one was filling in these little lines. They fill in okay. Got to watch I don't... Uh, poke a hole in the shirt but what I found is uh, didn't the black didn't blend right so if I can cut these out I didn't cut them out on the last shirt because kind of knew I had to do another one you could just fold them back look at that you fold them back you pull them out of the way. Doesn't matter. It's just a couple more. Couple more. Couple more. You could also make your centers of your letters. Uh, you could you could actually draw them out on you know green tape. Stick them on your board and then stick them on there. Uh, kind of as you go. You know. Uh, you could do it with the transfer tape. Uh, I find the transfer tape, you only, uh, you know, you only get a couple shots at it and then it, uh, you know, like the Plinko, I was very surprised that the Plinko uh, stayed on there for a second time. Obviously in the background you can hear the, uh, the young fella there, the puppy, he's whining. That's what they do. You know, they sleep, eat, they whine. That's what they do for their first part of life. So, we got black loaded. Oh, we got the black loaded. There's some gray come out. Oh, look, there he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. All right, let's blast this in. Carry on. Should have my uh, my ventilation going. I'm just gonna do this very quick. Won't take long. Maybe thickening up on the black. This is just black base paint. Just give it one coat, I'll come back. I gotta hurry up and do this because we've got another stencil, a two parter. That's kind of interesting. Took me a little while to kind of, you know. Now, stuff like this, uh, yeah, I could mask it. I'll probably just hold it. All these little curvy, all these little curvy pieces, I like, they're kind of cool. Because they give you, uh, even though you don't know it, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're doing curves. You're, do, you're doing curves without even knowing it. You know, you could just go, you could go like this. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Follow the letter. Follow the letter. Use less paint. Like I say, these things. That's the problem with these t-shirts. 
Now look, you can see there's a money sign there. And it's going there. I didn't stencil it in. Oh, and if you look at my stencils, you can see I've got, you know, I've got like the W here. See how it's this piece, and then it's kind of broken, and it's this piece, it's broken, it's this piece, it's broken, and this piece. And that's just so that the paper doesn't flip-flop around. Uh, it, it looks okay, you know, when you freehand your... I basically drew these letters out. Just, just you know, just line drew them. And then fatten them up. Made them look a little bit nicer. These shirts will probably be a one-time user. And I spent... I spent a long time doing the stencils. Hand cutting. I could have, you know... I, I've always asked myself, why... Why have I not bought a plotter? You know, vinyl cutter? You know. Well, I'll tell you why. You know why? Because this piece of paper that I cut my stencil out of yeah, cost me practically nothing. And yeah, I spent, you know, an hour or two, you know, drawing it and cutting it. Whereas a vinyl printer, you know, you got the cost of the vinyl, you're using hydro, you know, you got to do it all on your uh, computer, so you're spending time there. Guarantee you would have spent five or six hours trying to figure it all out, and you can't do custom custom writing like this now you can if you've got a really good laptop with the uh, a stylus pen where you can draw it right on the screen but now you're into big bucks this kind of lets you get where you want to be you know yeah it's a little bit a little trickier a little bit harder time wise not that bad not that bad spent a couple hours on uh you know, this one and the other stencil I'm going to show you. I don't find that that bad. You know, you just kind of, you just kind of draw it out. And trust me, I don't have drawing skills. My, my drawing skills consist of uh, doing stick men. You know, this, this is just writing. Uh, you know, we all learned it in school. So it was just a case of, uh, yeah, write it out. You know, and I threw up, believe it or not, I threw up a lot of stuff as I cut with my knife. And, like I said, my knifing, you know, with the exacto knife, it's not the greatest. It's not that my knifing is not the greatest. It's my, these, right here, hey, it's these that aren't the greatest anymore. You know, I have a hard time seeing those real fine lines as I cut. See, this is pretty straightforward. I know it's kind of boring. You're just following stencils. Now we're gonna we're gonna tear this off in a second because we've got a you know we've got another. These are probably dry. I can hit them, give them another quick. Oh, dog! Dang it! We done run out of black. Let's load her up again. Let's load her up. Two seconds. There we go. I'm not even going to put the cap on. Because as soon as I'm done this, I'm switching colors. Uh, does this paint bleed through the shirt? Uh, I might bleed through a little bit. I should have probably thickened up my mixes. It'll be all right for what we're doing. For what we're doing, like that looks good. The wife is right. Ah, it needs a little, needs a little darkening. 
We're not going to get carried away. Looks good to me. Am I getting any overhaze under the paper? I might. Am I worried about it? Obviously not. There we go. We got our black laid in. Nice. Gonna dump that back in my black. Don't think I need the black anymore. Let's, uh, let's clean the bowl because I know I'm moving on to a different color. And I'm not going to do the whole procedure because if I did the whole procedure, you know, it'd be, you know, probably closer to an hour video. You know, we don't roll like that at Sharp Customs. Come on. There we go. Let's take the stencil. It can come off now. Uh, I believe it can come off. Here, I'm going to give you another little tip. So I pre plan this. I pre plan this. I got to take a piece of tape. Put a piece of tape right here on the shirt. Stick it on there. I'm going to put one over here. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, see, a little on the paper. Don't want it on the paper. Hey, you little whiner. You can put a line right there so that follows this line right from this corner. These, technically, they're going to be locates for the next stencil, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So let's peel this off. Let's take this one off. I uh, should probably just throw it in a wood stove because I don't think it's needed anymore. <clears throat> but we'll just stick it up there. Let's uh, let's peel and reveal, eh? Peel and reveal. And this one's not going to be needed anymore either. See, but as you can see, as I peel it, it kind of distorts. You know, distorts the shirt a wee bit. You know, that's... Uh, it's nice. This, uh, this, this, this here stencil, believe it or not, I could literally stick this right onto another t-shirt. It's so sticky. Now... What I'm losing, obviously, on the stencil. So yeah, that's that's still like super, super sticky. So what I'm gonna lose is I'm gonna lose all these centers, which is fine. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not worried about it. Do 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 do. Yeah, don't sing. Don't sing in the video, John. Don't sing in the video. There we go. We got our we got our plinko board. Come on down. The wife is right. Now we're gonna move on to our next piece of little stencil. Uh, it's pretty funky. You'll like it. It's got many cuts. Many, many, many cuts. Look at that. Check that out. Check that out. So basically, I templated this off of the other stencil. I'm going to stick it in place, and then I'll show you, uh, so like I said, these lines, they should line up. They should line up with that. There's a, there's a line there. You can't see it, though, um, but I've got something else to help me along the way. I got something else to help me along the way. This line line up I got a piece of tape over it can't really see it's dang close we're gonna put it so these little triangles see these little triangles here so we'll try I got four of them one in each corner those are also pre-planned locates I put in because they line up with the they line up basically with this corner right here so as long as they line up with that corner or, you know, close, I can move them around just, just a tiny bit. There we go. And then what I do is I put a piece of tape, put a piece of tape there. 
because I'm going to need it there. Mainly to cover up the t-shirt and also help hold my stencil in place. So everything looks pretty good. Let's look at this one. You know, like I say, the t-shirt the t-shirt moves around a bit. So you always got to you always got to keep that in mind. That you know, the fabric moves around a bit. So you know, you're going to fight with that a wee bit, but don't uh, you know, for a quick little job like this, you know, don't get your panties in a knot. That's for damn sure. There we go. We'll cover up that one. We'll cover up that one now. So as you can see, I've already used this stencil. Um, but so like I said, we're doing we're doing a plinko board. Now I don't know if any of you have seen the plinko board, but uh, basically I've got everything. I've got everything numbered. See, G, P, R, G, P, R, G, P, R, G, P, R, all, blah, 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 all the way around. So that's, that's basically pink, red, green, pink, red, green, so on. And it just does the same pattern all the way around. Okay. We're not doing green, pink, or red at the moment. We're going to blast yellow. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it ASAP fast as I can. And this goes fast. I'm going to load it up, put my lid on. There we go, got my yellow going. We're just going to blast it. Might need a mask here and there. Like right here. There we go. And I'm not going to go right out to these edges. I don't want hard edges out there. I want it to be uh, kind of a fade from the center. Well, I'm just going to do this. Good enough. Just like that. These ones, I'm going to hold them a wee bit. Same idea. I'm just going to blast them out. Blast them out. This is your, your, your yellow border. Let's get rid of this. Do they got to be perfect? Hell no. This yellow's going on nice. It's good and thick. I could take them all the way out to the edge of the t-shirt, but that's the part where it's going to wrap. It's going to wrap around your midsection. Whoa, what do we got there? Not good. Not good. That was a low cape. Look at I sprayed yellow paint right over the tape. Look at that. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. Everything gonna stay in place? Not bad. We'll just blow right over it. And there we go. It's yellow. Could uh, you could wear a rubber glove? You know, you don't want to get. Uh, I get paint all over you. You wear a rubber glove. I, I just wash it off. Use some reducers. What not. I'll give you a little. Kind of a little showing. I'm just holding the paper so it doesn't. Uh, you know. It will move around a bit. If you let it. You can see it lift every now and then. Sometimes you can just go down the line. Now, nah, see, it's moving. It's trying to move away. You can slide your hand down it. Go slow. We'll do it in one pass. Oh, there's that damn tape again. Look at that. There's that locate. Let's get rid of that. I knew it was there, too. I knew it was there. Sometimes you gotta bend, you gotta be a, a contortionist. I like it when it all goes smooth. It doesn't always go smooth. 
Oh, I wish I could switch hands. I probably could. My left hand doesn't airbrush quite as good as my right. Oh, look at that. Getting runs there, eh? See that? I'm really, really blasting her in there. Don't have to really move that quick. Almost there. Some of my yellow lines are a little fatter than the others. Does it matter? Wow. Well, not really. See these little fade outs. There we go. We got our yellow. Yellow is done. Okay, I'm going to do a couple colors for you. Just to give you an idea. Because it's the same process. I, I don't want to bore you with the same process over and over and over. This was just kind of show you some little tips, some little tricks, you know. Uh, doing locates, you know, so if you're doing uh, multiple stencils, it's, it's kind of important, you know. Uh, you could lift it and look at it and lift it and look at it and then kind of tape it in the place where you need it. You know, you could go, you could do that. That works. That works. It all works. Okay, what do we want to start with? Let's, uh... Let's do the G. Let's do the green. I pre-mix these paints. Uh, they're not the greatest. So this was a this was a turquoise metallic, believe it. Oh, single stage paint mixed with a little bit of white. Yeah, yeah. Mixed with a little bit of white to give me that kind of a yeah mint flavor. Give me a little mint. That old school kind of T-bird look. I'm gonna set this in here. Now I'm just gonna do a few. So I'm just gonna pull them. I've got them taped. Like I say, I've already reused this stencil. So I'm gonna pull this back. There you go. See, I'm gonna fold it. I'm gonna do all the ones that say G, obviously. That's green. I don't consider that green. Good to, good to label your, you know, your stuff. <clears throat> now you can see the yellow. Yeah, I know. Million pieces of tape on here. Because as I uh, cut them and painted them, I kind of taped them back. Kind of taped them back where they had to go. Now, this is where I'm going to grab a mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover, I'm going to put my mask right on the edge of my yellow. I'm going to blow in. I can come across. Now these I'm just fading to the bottom. I don't want to hit that, that piece of paper down there. Or, you know, try not to hit it. I'm just fading, kind of fading towards it. I don't want a hard line down there. I'd rather just have the fade. Uh, with the green or the mint, whatever you, whatever you like to call it. Come over, block this side. Ah, I poke myself with the needle. That's what you get. You want to play, you got to pay. There you go, center. Just let her fade down. Just kind of, you know, aim it downward, but not, not at that piece of paper. <laughs> and this paint, like I say, because it was a single stage, uh, it does not dry right away. It takes some time. I got it cut pretty heavy with lacquer thinner uh, to help it dry. There we go. Last one. I mean, obviously it's not the last one, but it's the last one I'm going to show you guys with the green. And then, we're, and then we'll move on. We'll move on to a. We'll move on to another color, because I want you to just kind of get the idea of the. Uh, there we go. There we go. We covered our yellow with a mask to protect it. We uh, 
We got our our aqua or mint green whatever yeah and I'm doing this all with just my one airbrush I just clean it I don't rinse it because you know I'm always I'm always moving too fast to take the time run some reducers to it now I just blast it out get rid of the uh, the remnants I think I think we'll go on to the red. How about we go on to the red? No, no, we'll do the. Let's let's do the. Uh, so I mixed this up. This was a. Uh, uh, this was a magenta metallic candy, and I added a little bit of white to it. And it kind of gave me almost the perfect. I guess you maybe a lot of people would call that like a. They call it pink. Yes, pink. Pink. I call it more like a, more like a fuchsia, you know. Alrighty, I'm gonna peel back the pink. Let's peel back the pink. Let's peel back the pink. This one, and we'll do this one. I could do more. I don't want to bore you. I don't want to bore you. I want to show you some results. Got my mask. Actually going to grab a different mask. Like I said, I put these arrows. Put my little arrows on there so I know where the straight line is. Because I knifed that. You know, pre-knifed it, pre-cut these. <clears throat> let's do... Let's do some... Let's do some pink. Oh, we got some stuff going on with the airbrush. Not sure. We just got to go for it. That's all we can do. The paint does not want to come out. Hopefully it's not clogged. Give me two seconds. I believe I might know what it is. Thought maybe the air compressor was low on air, but it is not low on air. I'm gonna say we got some. We got a jam. We got a jam up. We either got a jam up. I'm gonna pull the needle out. We either gotta jam up sometimes. Believe it or not, I'm gonna use my needle. Bad idea. This little hole in the cap. If that little hole in the cap gets plugged, uh, that'll inhibit your spray. So, what we've got, I've, I've stumbled across this once before, and I believe, I'm pretty sure it was in one of our videos. What I got going on here is I've got something, got something very hard jammed in the tip because I cannot push, I cannot push the needle through. I'm not going to force it either. Um, you know, don't want to don't want to wreck the needle. Whatever is in there, it's stuck. The only way to get it out, the only way to get whatever is in that tip out, is to uh, bye bye. The only way to get whatever's in that tip out is to take it all apart. And push an old needle, push an old needle through it. So we have an alternative here. So you get to see it right here on Shark Customs. There you go. Airbrush down! Airbrush down. We're just gonna lay him aside. We're gonna unplug him. We're gonna grab another one. How about that? Not my 
favorite camera girl's airbrush. That's what I've uh, designated it as. It's camera girl's airbrush. Let's plug it in. Let's carry on. Let's get this done. Sounds good. Sounds good. We'll take the cap off. Take the cap off. Let's get some some of that there pink in there. She obviously cleaned her gun out really good last time because, yeah, it's nice and clean. I'm going to mess it all up. How about that? <laughs> yeah. You're cleaning it. There we go. We got something going on with this one, too. Not sure. Thinking the needle's just not tight. Wow. Okay, so here I am. Here I am blaming the airbrushes. Okay, now that seemed like it was plugged. Gotta be gentle. Here, how about this? Let's try it without the cap. Oh, look at that. Look what we got going on. Look at that. Look. It's not supposed to bubble in the pot. Not supposed to bubble in the pot. She needs some... She needs some TLC. I had that happen with mine, and that was when I found out. Look, at, I don't even get the end cap on, and it's bubbling in the pot. Yeah, just needs a needs a real good clean. Uh, sometimes you get stuff stuck in there that we're gonna go for it anyway. Yeah, I'm broken down. I'm broken down. I don't have the, the the nozzle on it. I don't have the cap on it. I don't get nothing on it. I don't get the. But we're gonna finish. We're gonna get out of there. Need a uh, need a cleaner. Need a cleaner. Need somebody in the background cleaning up my airbrush. Keep me going. Well, I'm thinking. Thinking whatever's going on here. It ain't working. God dang it. I don't know why it's bubbling in there. Why, why, why? Our air pressure's good. Tip looks clean. Everything looks good. The paint's a little thick, but that really shouldn't... Uh, See how it does that when I move the needle in and out. Let's try something. Why not? Let's try something. Let's try something. Let's take the paint. Let's take the paint. And let's take... Let's take some of this. A little bit more reducer. I put lots in it, but... I suppose if it thickened up, it thickened up awfully fast. I'm gonna reduce it down just a bit. See if it see if we get a better flow. No, we're still getting the bubbling. That bubbling is not supposed to be happening. Only way that bubbling usually happens is if I do it like this. Then I get a whole lot of bubbling. I'm literally not getting, I'm getting a little bit. 
I'm getting a little bit, but not enough. You know, I've been airbrushing all day long. You believe that? All day long, been airbrushing and no issues. You believe that? No issues whatsoever. Go shoot video? Well, you saw me. You saw me blowing in the black and all the other stuff. And here we are. We're, you know, running into issues. Running into issues. Plug mine back in. See if we can't do something with it. I know there's something stuck in that tip because I can feel it. I really don't want to. I can't even see that. Because basically you gotta you gotta feed the needle through the other way. Just ever so slight. Because there's something in there. Not really sure. What is in there? It's a piece of debris. Gotta remember dirty old shop. We do a lot of grinding, a lot of welding. Could be a, a grain of anything. Microscopic piece of, you know, material. I'm getting nothing. She is clogged. She is clogged right up, solid. So, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Do I have another airbrush? Of course I have other airbrushes, but I'm not pulling another one out. So we were doing the magenta. Uh, beside that, we would have done, uh, we would have pulled the next one, which would have showed red. If I lift this up, you'll get the idea with the, uh, at least with the yellow. You'll get to see the yellow. So we'll just pull these low tapes off that I taped, and you'll see. See, and then basically this creates its own border all the way around. Uh, I might even come in and put some masking tape and just do, uh, probably do a black line. Uh, just very subtle, just to make it stand out. But uh, a Plinko board. Yeah, if you've never seen a Plinko board, I'll show you. Because, you know, the magic of Sharp Custom, here we go. Here you go. Here's the first one. That's how this one was supposed to turn out, and it will turn out this way. But we get the Plinko, Plinko board. You know, you're not going to put all the pegs in here. Come on down. The wife was right. The little money sign. Of course, I... Uh, I put that in freehand because I can. It's pretty simple. But uh, yeah, that's my little airbrush tutorial. I'm sorry I couldn't have shown you a little bit more hands on. Uh, but it's basically all the same. You know, you lit all the tabs, your colors. Here, I'll show you one other, one other little quick thing. Don't fall. I'll show you one other quick little thing before I sign off. So. So each one of these tabs, kind of as you paint it, as you paint it, you know, if you're if you're concerned about it, as you paint it, of course we're not located. I can see we're not located. There we go. Stick you back, because yeah, obviously I have to. Uh, yeah, I have to. I have to finish this. Now, of course, my material has moved around a bit. My material has moved around a bit. There we go. So basically, you can stick these back. You can stick them back. They got tape on them. It's like this one. See? I can stick them back. That way, if you stick them back, 
where they came from. This, yeah, and it's it yeah, it takes time. It takes time. But there you go. See? Yeah, let's do one more. Obviously can't do that one. I gotta clean my airbrush. God dang it. Dog dang it. There we go. Make sure it's in the correct place. And then you could keep using this. You know, you keep using it. You do 10 t-shirts if you want. But yeah, you just stick all your pieces back. Obviously, when I first did it, I cut all the greens. Kind of peeled them back. Did the green. You know. Uh, and then taped them all back down. And then I did the pinks. And I cut them. I cut them right on the shirt. You just have to be very careful with your, uh, you know, your scalpel. Just nice... Nice, not too sharp. I mean, you could put a brand new blade in, but you know, you're cutting on a textile, so you you just want to kind of score the paper a couple times, peel it back, do your thing, and uh, there you have it. There you have it. Get to see another airbrush video. Pretty simple. Uh, I would say the stenciling is probably the hardest part. Get yourself some good tools. Get yourself a, you know, a uh, whatever they call this mat. A self-healing mat. Get yourself one of those. They're great to have around. Uh, you know, transfer tape. I, I meant to bring my roll out. Uh, you can get that at most vinyl stores. Just go in, ask them for transfer tape. Ask them for partial rolls. Sometimes they get some partial rolls just kicking around, and they'll you know they'll sell you a half roll. Uh, heck, they'll sell you a whole roll. They don't care. Um, but yeah. So there you have it. That's our airbrush video for today, I guess. It's not even night this time. Normally, it's super late. Um, got to see our new addition to the family. And, you know, share, like, subscribe, comment. I love to reply to the comments. Thank you to all my subscribers, all my new subscribers. I love you all. Peace. I'm out.